this that I wouldn't know what exactly was in your mind. What you prepared your heart to hear this morning. I don't know whether you actually came here to get something from the Lord. I don't know whether before you left home, you actually had something or you came here to mark attendance. So I'm giving you another opportunity to speak to the Lord God of the heavens and the earth. That daddy, this was what was in my mind before I came here. This is the reason why I'm here. Daddy, I wouldn't allow you to go passing me by. That which I am here for, O oh Lord, I believe you will do unto me. I believe somebody is praying sincerely. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, choir, I want you to help me with this song. The grace for his glory. O oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer the sacrifice of We really don't know the song, but I believe we do. Isaiah chapter 33. Uh, sorry, Exodus 33. I love this chapter so much. And I want to read from verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou saith unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know with whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou art said, I know thee by name, and thou art also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now, Lord, thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Then he went on, and in verse 18, Moses prayed a prayer and he said, Lord, I beseech thee, show me your glory. I want us all to rise on our feet as we take that song, please. Yeah, your glory, I want to offer the sound.
very thank you. Because we know for this reason we were given back to. We know for this very reason we were created. To show forth your glory, Lord. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. For the grace that worketh salvation that has been shown unto us. And we thank you for bringing us much more nearer to you. We know, O oh Lord, that this our Lord, you will show unto us, O oh Lord, that which you have ever required and which has been the desire of your heart. And you will help us, O oh Lord, to transit and be transformed into the exact image that radiates your glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we are afraid. If you are living so, a better amen. amen. Let's give a round of applause to Jesus as we take our seat. <laughs> Brethren, I want to believe and I'm 100% sure that the Lord God we serve it's not a God who does things without purpose. The Lord God of heaven, who is the God of Kaksa, will not organize something without a purpose. And I believe, and I'm 100% sure again, that for him to tell us that what he wants to discuss or what he wants to show unto us, is the grace for his glory. I'm 100% sure that it is time for his glory. So if I will ask us, when is the set time for the glory of the Lord to be revealed in your life, in my life, that the Gentiles will come in? I believe and I'm 100% sure again that it is now. It is now. It is now. We all know that the Lord has commissioned us from the very point we gave our life to Jesus to show forth his glory. This morning, the topic before me is the grace for his glory. And I believe the Holy Spirit will speak unto us in Jesus' name. I will not uh, go in an oversight to appreciate the choristers and the leadership of this great house for this opportunity to be used again as a vessel. You know, what always brings joy to my heart whenever I'm given this opportunity is this. The fact that you are being used as a bucket to fetch water, I know that even if the water is poured, you will remain wet. It's a joy. You will never remain the same as you were before you were used to fresh water. So I'm always happy. Thanks for the privilege. I want us to open our scriptures to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll read verse 15. I'm going to open our scriptures to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll read verse 18. Yes, sir. Brethren, Brethren, for all things are for our sake. That the abundance, continue, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Ah, church. Praise the Lord. You know, maybe because in the church it has become an habit of using praise the Lord to gain our attention. But I think when we say praise the Lord, that was the best song the psalmist know to sing. So church, praise the Lord. The Bible says, for this inspiration, permit me to put it that way, is for your sake. For we know that all things Prepared, ordained by God. 
organized, sets. Everything is purposefully from the out of God for our sake. You know, when church, whenever we gather for a program, my greatest fear has always been we will be able to decipher what exactly God has for bringing up this program. Or do we think the the choristers are here to entertain us. No. For this program is yet organized for your sake. Now, what is the major purpose? So that the abundant grace all through thanksgiving might be redundant to the glory of God. Then I want to take some questions which will help us from this Bible verse. All things for our sakes. The purpose that there will be an abundant grace which will, through thanksgiving, brings more glory unto God. So the first thing is, what is the essence of this meeting? To the glory of God. Why will God shower on anyone an abundance of grace? It will be an aberration if it is not to the glory of God. Thank God it is grace for his glory. So I want to say this morning that whatsoever format the Lord will be opening unto us, the essence of grace or whatsoever grace the Lord will be showing unto us, whatsoever grace the Lord will be multiplying in us this morning, I believe it is just for one purpose, for his grace. Excuse me, if it will not be for his grace, it is useless. Before we read 2 Corinthians 3, 18, I want us to read John chapter 15. We read verses 1, 2, and 3. John 15. I am the true vine, Continue, Ma. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that is attached to me, enjoying the abundance of grace, but which will not bring forth fruit. Yes, sir. What we do is we severe the relationship. We take them away. Yes, sir. But if this branch will show forth the essence and the reason for giving the grace, that they will wash and purge, that they will renew and refresh, so that it brings forth much fruit. Continue, sir. Please have me read verse 8. You know what? This is weird. The glory of my father lies. This is what brings glory to God. That even though you are attached to this very vine, and the nutrient all the way from the soil is being transferred to you as a branch, don't forget, herein is my father glorified. Yes, sir. You know what? That you bring forth fruit. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I want to try as much as possible to go before myself. So that even if time will not permit me to hand it where I was thinking I would hand it. Uh, yet, the Lord must have spoken unto us. Brethren, every tree that brings forth fruit, my father will take, a, take his time. Remember, he's the husband man. He moves around in the vine in the vineyard looking for branches that brings forth fruits. And so, if we see any branch from the abundance of grace available to it, that is perfect sunlight. I want us to open to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. 
Yes, commencing from verse 1. Is anybody there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to sing a song concerning my well beloved Jesus Christ. Concerning his vineyard. Yes, sir. You see? Number one thing is this. The Lord took his time to plant you into Kaksa, which is a very fruitful field. The Lord took his time to plant you into where you are. The Lord deliberately would not have left you to perish, but he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light of his dear son. This is a fruitful vineyard. And so, yes, sir. He fenced it because he said, touch not my anointed. Let not those that are wicked in their, in their thoughts from outside look at the fruits of my vineyard and begin to throw stones. So in order to put these wicked people away, I remember in my secondary school, there, there is this law that don't pick, don't pluck. Is anybody here from Abeokuta Grammar School? Ogun State. Oh, God bless you, sir. Don't pick mango. They will say, don't pick mangoes. Don't pluck. The reason is because if you allow students, even the ones that are not yet ripe, they bring it down. In fact, in the quest of plucking the ripe ones, the unripe ones will suffer loss. And so, in order to keep these people that disrupt those that are not yet ripe, that disrupt, that, 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 that removes and, and cause Afok said, I made a fence around it. And for this tree, not to have any issue, I did what? I picked away the stones. Continue, sir. You know what? The, the choices of vine. Continue, sir. And he built a tower. What is the essence of a tower? The Bible says, he that keepeth me, uh, Psalm 121, I will, look, I will lift up my eyes unto the heap. For whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer, uh, he will not suffer my foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth me, yes, that's where I'm going. The Lord that keepeth me, he neither sleep nor slumber. The Bible says, he stands on the watch. He is my keeper. If the Lord will not keep the house, they watch in vain. And so he built a tower. Yet because of you. Yet because of me. He built a tower to watch over. Yes, sir. And peradventure, there is need for wine. See, you don't need to... The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Something just dropped in my, hand, in my heart. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. I would like to quickly say this. It might be a veering off of the, line, of the major line. Is there any gift the Lord has given unto you that he has not made the wine press to process your wine? Okay. You have this oratory gift. And you think the church is not appreciating you. Or there is no... I have had people say, this gift I have, uh, the, 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 there is no platform in the church to express it. He said, even the wine, if he's the one that planted this vine, sir, he already had a vine press, a wine press to process every of the fruits. So permit me to say, if at all you are now telling us that there is no room for your gifts, for the, for, the, for the display or for the manifestation of the glory of God. Thank you, sir. Through the gift that has been given unto you in the house of God, I permit, I, I'm, I'm permitted to say, I doubt who gave you the gift in the first place. I doubt who gave you in the first place. Because if he is the one that planted this vine, it is his nature to make sure there is a wine press. So that we don't have to go outside 
and give our fruits to wicked vile pressers. Who will dilute it and mix it with aqua before they return it back? So that all we have will be processed within and will be useful for everyone within. And remember the Bible says, for even this working of the spirit, the gift of the spirit is given unto us to profit without. The Bible says it is for the edifying of the saints, the work of the ministry. And the last one is uh, for the work of the Ephesians 4, if I'm right. I don't want to. Perfection of the saints, work of the ministry, and the edification of the body of Christ. Yes. Perfecting the saints work of the ministry and edification i want to believe the grace is available now quickly i want to say this from the book of exodus 33 that we read moses did something which i want you to do the grace of god that bringeth salvation titus 2 11 has appeared unto all men but it will teach us to do something Exodus 33, I have just a few minutes more. Exodus 33, I want somebody to read from verse 1. The Lord said unto Moses, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. For I will not go up in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. And verse 4. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I will take it off from there. But there is a point for us in verse 4. The incense of the glory that was revealed in Exodus 34 was given by to in Exodus 33 by the acknowledgement of the people that it is disastrous, dangerous. It is to no good end if the Lord will not go with them. A journey which the Lord will not start, it will not end. And the people wailed because God said he, he will not go with them. Then let me continue from verse 5. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are stiff naked people. Verse 6. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornament by the Mount Ore. Now verse 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass, verse 8, when Moses went down to the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent. When I was reading that verse, in verse 7, New King James put it, and Moses took his tabernacle. King James put it as the tabernacle. And he pitched it far off from the congregation. And then, where Moses decides to pitch his tent, became the tent of meeting, the grace for the glory. The principal one, after you must have, I believe, given your life to Jesus, the grace that worked salvation has been perfected in you. You've received the grace. You are saved. The next thing is, come ye out of there and touch not unclean things. The Bible says pursue peace with all men and with what? Holiness without which no man shall see God. Moses wanted to see God. Moses wanted a congregation. Mo Moses wanted a meeting with God. But he knows that if the tent of congregation 
that he had in mind, the platform of, of, on which you want to meet God is still within the tabernacle, within the congregation. What will happen? Nothing. Because God had already said, I will not what? I will not go amiss. So he decided in order that the glory of God may be revealed, it is better I pick up the stands, pitch it far off. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Brethren, number one is separation. And let me say this because my time is almost up. After separation, you need the grace to discern. <laughs> Every revelation in the word of the Lord is not the end point. It's a starting point for another revelation. Moses already had a 40 days experience with God. He came back. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, as I close. Now, we all, having been saved, yes, sir, with open face. Excuse me, sir, the open face there is without Kono Koho, is without Amulu Mahala, is without smuggling, is without Bai Bai. In the streets, are you so sure of what you are looking for? Then go for it, brethren. And as we hope with unveiled faces, yes, sir. Beholding as in a glass, Beholding as in a glass. I remember the psalm. He said, "I have set the Lord ever before me." Huh. Continue, sir. Because He is on my right hand. Continue, sir. We have been changed now into that same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Lord. Brethren, whatsoever it is, this grace comes by knowledge. He that sitteth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. A transformation from one level to another. What is it? Whatsoever the Lord has decided to bestow upon us, have its platform from the grace of salvation, and will continue to multiply by the sitting. The revelation of his knowledge. Brethren, it is only he that sitteth in the secret place of the Most High that we abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up thither, there is a rock beside me. And while I pass, I will hide you in the cleft of the rock, that when I pass and my glory before thee, then I will remove my hand, that you will see my back view, but my face you will not see. For there is a greater grace, much more than that of Moses here, that even the face of the Lord could be seen. Because the condition God gave to Moses said, because the day you see my face, you will do what? You will die. And the Bible made us to understand. And we are all dead in Christ Jesus. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We are all dead in Christ Jesus. I want us to bow down our heads. Because part of the grace is obedience. I, wouldn't, I believe that uh, no one can completely dis, dislodge what the Holy Spirit wants to give unto us. So I want you to pray. The Bible says, may grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied in you. So I want you to pray that prayer. Daddy, let there be an increase of this grace. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works. And glorify your father. In this, my father is glorified. That you bear much fruit. Say, Daddy, I increase in the grace. So that I bear much fruit unto your glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise God.
How many of us know this song? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace thou pardon and cleanse within. Let's take it one more time. Grace, grace, God's grace. 